Hi folks, I'm Tootie and today I'm going to teach you guys how to install mods onto PlateUp. First of all, you're going to want to open up your Steam library and click on PlateUp. Press the workshop and uh, go to items. Browse items. So here you can see all the mods that you can install for PlateUp. And you can even sort it by different tags if you want mods that give you special appliances or the the modded dishes or just uh little little tweaks little quality of life mods all these ones can be sorted so we just click a tag you want and you can find what you want to install so i'm gonna go find the fry that mod and we're gonna hit subscribe and before we do that you'll notice that there's required items for this mod so when i hit subscribe it's going to prompt me to install the required mods. So I highly recommend that you press subscribe to all. And then it says we're subscribed. And if we click on it again, it'll update it and say that those are all installed as well. So now that we've got a mod installed, we're going to go back to our library and we're going to press right click on plate up, press properties installed files and we're going to press verify integrity of game files okay so this is important when you install mods because if you don't do this the game might not boot up properly now if you've got mods installed and you want to remove them you'll have to press browse subscribed items and you can press unsubscribe from all so that'll remove all those mods before you boot up your game, I recommend doing the verifying files just to make sure everything's good. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how to subscribe to a collection. So if you've got collections saved or you've made one, browse collections. And I, I favor all my collections that I use so it's easier to find them. So here's my quality of life mods pack that I can link in the description. I do that. And we can just press subscribe to all. And it's going to prompt you, do you want to add all the mods or just overwrite any mods that you've subscribed to? So if you, I, I don't have any mods installed right now, but just to be in the safe side, we're going to press overwrite my subscriptions. So we only have this mod pack collection installed. And now we can see we've got a gazillion mods installed, <laughs> including um, Stream Outfit Pack, which, which is where I get my potatoes from my potato skin and uh, there's quite a few mods in here that I really like to use including the color teleporters mod, the patience indicator, uh, ki kitchen designer which we're going to use to do custom maps. I also really recommend the toggle bubble follow camera for bigger maps so then you can zoom in and focus your camera and then you're not squinting super super far into the game. Random customer colors is really fun. Super Crane or the Crane Mouse mod are both really nice mods if you're using controller so you can use your mouse for the Crane mode. Um, starting Meal Selector makes it easier to choose the food. Count up keeps track of how many portions are left in the foods. And uh, a new one that I've gotten is called Hide Sides and if you've got metal tables it'll, it'll remove the sides so then it doesn't obstruct your vision. All right, now that we've learned how to install mods, let's figure out how to make our own custom maps. So first of all, we're going to go to plateuptools.com, click on Kitchen Designer, and this, if you want to read through, you, you can. I go right to Kitchen Designer Editor, and this is a tutorial on how to make your own map. I'm just going to skip through this, but it always pops up every time you open this menu. So if you need a refresher, it'll walk you through it. So first of all, we want to choose our profile. Um, so diner is one table, mediums two, extended is three, huge is four. These are different themes you could use, but we're just going to make a basic restaurant. And let's do, let's do huge with four tables. We can also choose a setting and you can choose, you can choose whatever one you like. I'm just going to choose a country cause it's just, it's cute. Um, so the first thing we're going to need is a kitchen and you can just 
make sure you click on the right one. Kitchen is blue. And you can just make it whatever shape you like. Like a lot of the times I just do a big square. And you could cover this whole thing. It's a huge map. Whatever you like. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make kind of looks like a pokeball. Or like a hamburger. Yeah, I'm just gonna make I'm just gonna make it look like that. Alright. Nice. So we've got the kitchen and the dining room. The kitchen needs to be at least 20 tiles, and the dining room needs to be at least 30 tiles. And we've got plenty of that. Um, the next thing we're going to need is a front door, which you can find by clicking this. And it'll say draw features, front door. If you ever want to go back to designing the kitchen and uh, uh, dining room, you can click draw features to get back to draw tiles. So front door. And we just got to make sure the front door is on the bottom side of the restaurant. This is where the customers are going to, the customers are going to walk in from the left and they're going to walk to the front door. So they need to be able to access the restaurant for that. And uh, the door, this is an internal door. So if you want some doors in between your kitchen and dining room, you can put them wherever you like. And it's just nice to give your servers and cooks some counter spaces to pass because the black line is a wall. This gray line is a hatch. So if you ever, um, and if you want to remove the hatch, you just press the eraser and it'll go back to being a wall. All right. So we've got our checklist is done. We've got a big enough dining room. Our dining room connects with a room that goes to the outside. Uh, the kitchen's big enough. All the rooms are connected to each other. There's one front door and the front door is on the bottom edge of the kitchen. All right. So now what we're going to do, we're going to press the export button and it's going to take us to this page. So this is our custom restaurant, kind of shaped like a pokeball, might be a hamburger, might be a potato. Who knows? The important thing is you save this code if you want to use it again. So let's copy that code and we're going to take this, open up plate up and press start. We're going to go to kitchen designer and we're going to paste that code into this box. If you want to, you can use the random seed or just make it a set seed. You can even put a seed code into it if you want to do that. But I usually just enable random seed and leave it at that because I like having a different uh, card and blueprint experience every time I play the same map. All right, we're going to press generate kitchen layout. It's green. That means we're good. So we can close the window and load into our restaurant. So here's the preview of our custom map. As you can see, it's a way bigger than a typical vanilla one would be giving us lots of space. So let's load on into here. All right. So here's our custom map. We've got four tables because we chose huge. And what you can do is just set up your tables, whoever you like. As you can see, you've got, we've got a lot of counters here. I think it's about one counter for each hatch that you have. Yeah, exactly. Exactly one counter for each hatch that you could possibly have. So if you want lots of counters, lots of free counters, just make a lot of hatches. Um, and you can, you can put that wherever you like. I just, I just like, I like making them in a square in the side and then eventually having to throw them out. But sometimes, sometimes counters come in handy when you're automating. So don't, don't be in a rush to throw them out right away. So, um, as you can see, it's kind of, it's kind of small, like, well, it's zoomed out. So it's, it's, it's hard to see what's going on, but we do have a mod installed and then there's mods. So the mod I'm looking for is called the camera mod plate up, follow camera, right, right here, this one. So that mod, um, if you look at it on the steam workshop, it tells you the different, um, hotkeys for it. But if you press F. It'll zoom in on your character and it'll follow you around. Now this might make you a little bit motion sick. So not, not, it's not definitely not for everyone. I personally don't like that, but what I do like is the ability to, um, lock, Oh, sorry. Lock in your camera 
on a cert on a certain spot. So like, let's say I want to zoom in more on where I'm working. So let's hold down G and it's going to save that spot. So now when I move around, it's fixed and we can actually scroll in. I can use my mouse wheel or my right joystick to zoom in or out. And it's really nice. You can see more of what's going on. And if you ever need to, you can zoom out a lot too. Let's say you've got research up here, but you can't really see it during the day. Okay, let me, let me move my cap. Where's my cabinet? Yeah, let's just say we want to do research, but we don't want to see it when we're serving. So we're going to have it follow my, custom, my character for a second. I'm going to have to press F twice there. And we can lock in a new spot and zoom in there. And if you press a V, you can rotate between the two spots. You can do this for as many um, checkpoints as you like. And it's, it's really handy. So if you're working on a big restaurant with your friends, you guys can all focus on your areas. And it doesn't have to be like super squinty town. Isn't that great? If you're ever looking for custom map codes, I've got a bunch of them in my Discord in a channel called Modded Seed Sharing. And I regularly post the new ones that I've been using. And if you ever, if you ever make some yourself, you are welcome to share them in my Discord as well. I hope you guys um, have lots of fun using the mods and making your own maps. And uh, I'm really excited to see what you guys make of your restaurants with all this new space. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Later taters. Bye bye.